So this is how to make a um, multi-boot USB drive using easy to boot. First of all we need to download RMPrep USB from the rmprepusb.com website and then you can go to the easy to boot uh, project tab on the website and uh, download the easy to boot files from the link on the website which you'll find on the how to make USB drive uh, heading and you'll find the link uh, just about there so let's just download that, it's a zip file So we need to format a USB flash drive to make it uh, boot to Grub for DOS. Having done that, we can then copy on the easy to boot files. So select FAT32 and boot as HDD, which is uh, just uh, makes the some biases will uh, boot from the flash drive better if you set that option. And then this is formatting the flash drive. Obviously it's going to wipe all data off the flash drive when we do this. Now we need to install Grub for DOS, so we can use the install Grub for DOS button. And you'll find it best if you install both to the master boot record and to the partition boot record. Uh, so we use the button twice uh, to install to, um, to both parts of the disk. This makes it uh, boot more reliably on, on a lots of a uh, wider range of, of systems. Make sure that uh, everything's copied over OK. Now we um, unzip our easy to boot uh, zip file that we downloaded from the website and we just un unzip it to the root of the USB drive. Overwriting any files that uh, were there before like the grub loader file to make sure we have the same version that uh, we use in easy to boot. If in doubt, just use the most recent version. So the next thing to do is to test the menu to see if that boots. So we run QEMU, we can press the F11 function key and uh, just see what we get. So you can see we've got a utilities menu, a backup menu and a DOS menu. So these are, I've got files in them which are already in the download from Easter Boot and we can go back to the main menu by pressing F8 there's a backup menu there by the backup menu we've got a um, free DOS floppy image sorry the DOS menu and it's a free DOS floppy image um, and uh, only the uh, only the entries that have got files in them are listed so this is memory test subfolder and we can run memtest86 there the other memory test item um, actually crashes under QEMU but it works on a real machine. So let's now have a look at the uh, folder structure. So most of the files are under the underscore ISO folder and uh, the main menu, the first menu that you see is determined by the files that are inside the main menu folder. So let's add a clonezilla ISO file. So we just drop the ISO file into the main menu folder. If you don't like it being listed as a .iso file in the menu, uh, you can change. You can add a .txt file, which must be the same name as the ISO. This is how you do it. You can see here it's the same name as we put in the text file, and the help text underneath the menu is what we put in the text file. So let's just move those two files to another menu. Uh, let's put it in the, into the Linux menu. You can also use uh, non-ASCII characters in the .txt file um, and I'll show you how we can do that now. You have to save it as a UTF-8 format. So let's just have a look and see what that looks like in the menu and then we'll test the uh, Ubuntu ISO file out to see if it works. You can also uh, install XP onto an AACI PC um, just from a vanilla XP ISO. First of all we need to get the mass storage driver pack for XP and uh, we can get it from the link here. 
Download the torrent. Use BitTorrent to um, get the actual driver pack, and then we extract it onto our easy to boot drive. Just need to rename the any file that we downloaded, which has got the version name in it, um, to uh, driverpack.ini. So you should now see um, all the drivers are now under the DM folder. They should all be in there. So now we just copy our vanilla ISO into the Windows XP folder. It can be any name you like, and you can have as many ISOs as you like in there. And don't forget to make the, all the files on the drive contiguous using Control F2 in our prep USB. That's Control F2. So now let's boot, and this time I'm using a, a virtual machine, um, virtual box, Oracle virtual box to boot um, XP. Choose step one and then the ISO that you want, and then use the default entry, and you'll get the correct ACI driver automatically detected. So this is the uh, text mode setup part of uh, XP and uh, formats the drive and then starts to install the files, copy the files over. Now we need to run the second step of XP install. So choose step 2 from the Windows XP menu. Uh, this one is for um, high RAM systems, so systems with more than 512 megabytes of RAM. You can use uh, this setting. It's the best one to use. The, the uh, low RAM setting doesn't always work. So this runs the GUI mode part of the install. You need to install the um, unsigned driver there. Just say yes. Answer the usual questions. And uh, now we reboot to the hard disk. So just choose uh, boot from first HDD in the menu, or just let it boot. Just uh, remove the USB drive and let it boot by itself. There we go. So now let's add a Windows 7 ISO and you just do that by adding it into the Windows Win7 Win folder. If you want to, you can also add a text file for it. Again, just make the name the same as the ISO file. Put the word title and then the title you want to appear in the menu, followed by any help text after slash end. Save the file. So now we've got the two files there. We can boot to Easter Boot. And uh, we should get a Windows 7 option automatically appear in the menu, which is just there, number 6. And then install our uh, ISO. Okay, let's try again after we've made the file contiguous. And you should get it to boot to Windows 7. The Windows 7 install in Easy to Boot works by uh, using this blue console to load the ISO. You must see this blue console window, otherwise you won't, it won't work.
some ISO files uh, you need a special extension. This is a bit recognizes lots of different file extensions. And all you have to do is change the file extension to the right one. Here's what happens if you try to boot BART PE as just a .iso file. By using .iso ask, uh, it will ask us what extension we'd like to try and we can try to find the right one. So it looks like ISO mem wing v is the extension to use for BART PE files. So we're just going to rename ISO ask to ISO mem wing v and then try it again and make sure it works. It should be in the menu. There's the menu. And just press enter. It loads it into memory and see if it works. There's another way to install XP ISOs, and that's by using WinPE. We can use a WinPE ISO, a Vista version or a Windows 7 ISO version or a Windows 8 version, or we can actually use Windows 7 installed um, DVD ISO as the WinPE um, ISO. This is how to do it. I should point out that you need to use a USB flash drive for this. If you're using a USB hard disk for the easy to boot, then you can add an extra flash drive to make this work. So we'll actually boot from the WinPE uh, ISO file uh, and run WinPE. And when WinPE runs, we can run WinNT32. But first, we need to format the hard disk. If you answer the questions and check carefully the drive that you're formatting, um, you can either completely wipe the hard disk or you can just um, format a single partition and install XP onto that partition. Now I want to add conboot to our Easter boot disk, but uh, this requires a special .mnu file because uh, conboot needs to have the hard disks swapped over before it will work. There are quite a few .mnu files in the docs folder. Um, have a look to see if there's one there that you need for your particular payload file. So this uh, installation of XP has got a password set. So let's reboot to conboot. We're using conboot and see if we can get into XP. Next we'll look at how to boot a Linux ISO but with persistence. We can make an ext2 uh, file system uh, using RM Prep USB and uh, we can boot a lot of ISOs with persistence. We need a special menu file for this, so again have a look at the .menu file instructions to see what to do. Don't forget to make the files contiguous on the drive, and now let's see if we can change the desktop. When you create an ext2 file, the volume name is the same as the file name. So you must create it with the file name that the Linux ISO is expecting, even if you change the file name afterwards. Let's just add a uh, folder here and also change the desktop and then reboot and see if we get persistence.
finally let's have a look at uh, how we can change the background and the menus etc there are a few themes already set up inside uh, E2B which you can simply copy over and try out so first we'll try the Jolene theme you just copy the two files the myutp.config file and the bitmap background file over to the underscore ISO folder and there's Jolene for you for Star Trek fans The menus all appear um, as they were before. So let's try another theme. Um, got one here called uh, Alliums. Again, the myetb.config file is just copied over together with the background file to the ISO folder, and we'll see what this one looks like. And there you go, there's an example of uh, how to change the background. So for more information about Easy to Boot, visit rmprepusb.com and look at tutorial 72A. Thanks for watching.